Duke, we're gonna have to do something about that Cobra operator. He's causing us too much trouble. Don't worry, gung-ho. I've already called for backup. Hmm. Zortan to Cobra Commander, we may have trouble. Did you say something? Oh, uh, no sir! Oh, watch me make a banana split, mother Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a little look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified series Zartan. I've been looking forward to this figure for three reasons. One, it's another addition to the G.I. Joe Classified series. I'm loving the line. I'm loving the designs. I wasn't big into G.I. Joe when I was a kid in the 80s. So this is my chance to jump into G.I. Joe. More characters, more fun. Two, it's a mainline release. It's none of that Target bullshit. I can just pre-order it from any site. In this case, it popped up in stock on GameStop. I ordered it, it shipped, I got it, done. And three, it's Zartan. <laughs> what more do I need to say? Looking at the package, it's what we're used to with this line so far. Blue background design, you have the windows showing. I think that's most of it. Nothing hiding behind the individual artwork. For each character, they have a different artist do their rendition of that character, and it just works out. I mean, at first I thought, ah, oh, it's not very consistent, but at the same time, I like seeing different takes on the same property. On the back, the artwork we've seen since the start of the line, but they've come in and added the newer characters. There's Beachhead, the Vipers, Firefly, and then, of course, Zartan. Parents includes figure and seven accessories. Warning, small parts. Don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, Hasbro's new file card system, where you have to go to the website, kind of decipher it. And for Zartan, it's Mercenary, Level level four, classified level three, infiltration level three, and disguise level four. You better be level four disguise. It's freaking Zartan. This is also where we start to see Zartan's individual color, this off green kind of swampy feel to it. Then his logo peeks out right here. You see a little bit more here. He's number 23 in the series. On the bottom, more legalese barcode. Let's get this open. See what's going on here. And I'm not gonna lie, while I like the G.I. Joe designs, is that just one piece of tape? It's the Cobra characters, or well, the bad guys in general. They're always a little bit more fun. And then for the backdrop, we get a full on just boom. There's the Dreadnoughts logo. It's just a kick ass design that, I, I don't know, I could see this as mini a tattoo. And then if you're wanting to keep the file card, you can slice that off. Oh, and getting it out of the package, messing around with it for a bit, it is unmistakably Zartan. Even if you're looking at it like this, yep, that's Zartan. It's the bare midriff. Even though this doesn't feature it back in the day, the vintage figure had color changing skin. You put it in the sun, it turned into kind of this bluish hue. So they wanted as much skin showing as possible. And I love that they kept this. I'm a maniac, maniac. But that doesn't mean they didn't modernize and update the rest of the costume, even though the basic beats of the vintage design are still there. Starting at the boots and working up, there's an armored kind of look, a leather look to the top, but one thing that's easy to miss is this fire design on the top of the foot. I don't know if that's a callback to something, but it's neat. That works up to a shin guard, a knee pad, and some thigh armor. It has some different elements to the design on each one, but at the same time, it ties together really well. Some slight wear and tear, but I think my favorite thing is the mix of matte blacks and gloss blacks. It just helps things stand out a little bit more. It catches your eye, but you're not quite sure why it's catching your eye until you look really, really close. The pants underneath have that now standard classified texture to it. It looks really fabric-like. Some weird techno seams running up and down. And on the back, you get a lot more of that texture, a lot more wrinkles, and then straps to hold all that front armor on. At first, I thought they were all part of the sculpt, but they are flexi separate pieces. Well, at least the thigh and the shin. The forearm guards, again, same design as the rest of the armors. You got a matching set at the Cobra Techno store. Some texture under that, the straps going around, it works down to the gloves, some texture on the fingers, and then almost a, is that a scale? Some kind of lizard skin? Which is a running theme because he also has some kind of alligator, or big lizard texture up at the hood. Up on top, looks good, other side. That skinned swamp snake, feel also comes down to the belt. Like, you know, he caught something, he's gonna wear it around his waist. And then there's also scales on the back knife sheath. And have a very nice horned skull belt buckle sculpted under there. I love it. I kind of want to cut this belt off 
Is this? Well, it's attached in the back. It's a shame it's hidden under there. Got a sculpted on strap around the bicep. Works up to a shoulder pad. Got basic lines running around. Looks like armor, you know? And that is attached to the rubber torso overlay. Completely separate piece. You can see some pec sculpt under there. I'm sure if you pop the arms off and then slid this off, pop the arms back in, you'd have a, well, Besides all these armor plates, you'd have a basic naked G.I. Joe classified series torso. The design work here, again, matches this. You have your glossy blacks, your matte blacks, or maybe even grays. There's even this painted brown strap running on the side, which I love. It's some extra detail there, but then you notice that the rings and the studs weren't painted on. Wait, what was that? Oh, that's another brown strap running around the top. The back is more of the same, some nice detail sculpt, even some air vents, you know? It gets sweaty down in the swamp. And then we get up to the head. I'm going to pull the hood off and the neckerchief to get a good look. We'll come back to these in a minute. Basically, it's a bald head sculpt. It's the paint that actually puts things over the top here. The fairly simple Zartan eye makeup, the white of the eyes giving him kind of that creepy inhuman look. And then the lips have some color to it, but it's not quite what you think of when you think of lips. It's a villainous, almost sinister look, which is the purpose of it, but I'm just pointing it out. In the back, very unassuming. Just, you know, bald dude. But it's me, Zartan. That looks badass. That's some customizing fodder if you don't even like G.I. Joe. Running into a few things, I did have to add some shock oil to the right hip. You know what I mean. Some stress almost on the hip pin when you go to turn the leg up like that. Just the right side here. The left is free. You can feel the detents or those studs on the ball in there. But I haven't felt that fear. <laughs> that one deep down inside that I'm about to break my new toy. And while we're there and have the hood on, off and everything. Going over articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck going up into a ball in the skull, and then there's also a ball joint at the base of the neck. So altogether, looks up, looks all the way down. Not as much as I thought there would be, but plenty of tilt. Swivels all the way around. There is a butterfly shoulder, goes back, goes forward, which leads to a hinge at the shoulder coming past 90. There's also a step. See it right there at the top of the shoulder? If you just crank the arm up, it acts like a stop. You have to kind of push it down work it in and then you can go full range. Swivels all the way around. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow comes up. Will the armor get? No, nope, it goes most of the way up. Swivel at the wrist. Up and down hinge for trigger finger. And he has that on both sides. Hinge at the mid torso comes forward one click. Arcs back. But to help out there, there is a ball joint at the waist. So together, whoop, well, most of the way forward. Arc way back. Gets some tilt side to side and then rotates. There's a drop down joint at the hip. That goes out to a ball joint that comes forward. Goes back. Out. Out. All the way. I think for me, the honeymoon is almost over for the drop down hip. If that's what's causing the stressiness on the inside, it doesn't really give us more movement than without. Is it about there and there? About there and there. Swivel at the thigh, hidden nicely across this strap and then behind the thigh armor. Double knee out oh, wrinkles. Stop it right there. He's not going to quite reach his ass if you rotate around and give it. He can kick his other butt cheek. Ow, 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 ow. Swivel at the boot, integrated nicely by the boot itself and then hidden behind the shin armor. Hinge of the ankle goes back. Unfortunately, not a lot forward. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, I pulled him off at the first, but he comes with a hood and a neckerchief. Neckerchief is just a basic sculpt. It's open in the back. Plug it around or shove it over his head. However you feel the easiest to get it on there. And then for the hood, I was really surprised to not see a peg or a peg hole up top. It's actually the ears that lock it on there. I am so happy it comes down over his eyes and looks like it sits naturally. But like most hoods, you try to look up and it's going to get in the way or look wonky or you look to the side, it's going to try to kick up a bit. You can work around all that. Most of the time, he's going to be looking forward, looking badass. He comes with this swampy looking knife, you know, like he's been going after alligators with it. It's cast in a black material, no paint on top of it, but it gets the point across. <laughs> get it? Point? At first, I thought the hoop was a like finger guard, like he could spin it around, but it doesn't really want to go too far on the finger. He can hold it like that, but it, it looks weird. I've just been doing it like this. But if you don't want him holding it, there is the knife sheath on the back. I don't quite like that though, because the sheath is attached or pinned to the crotch overlay piece and it sticks out right there. It kind of gets in the way of the arm. He also comes with this blaster, which a lot of people hate the laser stuff, but this is essentially his weapon from the vintage days. Just updated with a little bit more sculpt. If you're putting it in his hand, trigger finger, twist, turn. 
He comes with this rattlesnake head, again, that falls into the whole overall theme, and a monkey paw. I don't remember him having anything like this back in the day. I'm not going to gripe about extras, options, more accessories. Oh no, they gave us more plastic. So if I'm not going to use them, I can just put them somewhere else. But you can either have him holding them, or there's pegs on the back of them and peg holes on the belt that you can just plug in. Another one for the monkey paw in the back. Something visually interesting as you're looking at, ooh, that midriff. Maniac! It's Zartan, he has disguises. Of course, he's gonna come with a mask. Again, very vintage inspired. Doesn't have the full beard like the original, but it gets the point across. You can just snap, well, it doesn't snap. It kind of just sits. And like that, you think, oh man, that looks huge. But once you get the hood on, and everything together changes his appearance completely. Who is that guy? That's not Zartan. Move along, move along. Works way better than I thought it would. And then there is his backpack. Again, a direct callback to the original design. I have a couple of tubes right here. Otherwise, fairly basic. But the cool thing about that, it opens up and it has a spot for the mask to hide away in case you're not using it. I love that the classified line for the most part has accessory storage. And there's even some orange paint apps just to break up the black plastic. And with that, if you're getting him into all kinds of action poses or you're having a problem or you don't want these hanging at the hip, you can pop those off and stick them there. Maybe you prefer it like that. Also notice the pegs on both sides of the pack trigger guard around it to store the gun away. And if you don't care for the knife sticking out of the sheath, that is actually what that hoop is for, peg on the other side. So everything's on his backpack. If you need to get out of here, or if you're keeping all this in a bag somewhere, everything's together. Several, several options. Zartan stands at a uh, six and three eighths inches tall, which works great next to other Cobra characters like, well, Cobra Commander and Destro. In fact, these two kind of match up with that extra bulk to them, that extra mass. No, I wasn't making a mass device joke. That extra bulkiness is more apparent next to the grunts like the Viper and the Trooper. He's still smaller than Roadblock and Gung Ho, but would give Duke and Scarlet a run for their money. And then if you're thinking of Zartan for some custom fodder or, you know, to mix and match with other lines, here it is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper and Marvel Legends Black Panther. So at the end of the day, a fine, fine rendition of a much needed character for the shelf. Zartan was always one of those characters that stood out against the rest of Cobra. His design was more Mad Max, not military. Well, as military as Cobra got, you know what I mean? And even to someone like me who didn't have a lot of G.I. Joes as a kid, Zartan was still one of the figures that I had to have. In fact, there was Destro, there was Zartan, and there was Snow Serpent. Yeah, there was a couple of more, but those were the biggies. Yeah, Hasbro sticking that close to the original design while giving it some modern flourishes, some updated design elements, yeah. That makes him, well, now he's one of my favorites here. Even though he is a bit hindered at the ankles and head. It's the armor and hood. They just get in the way a bit. But standing on the shelf or in disguise back in the background, badass. It wouldn't surprise me at all, and it may be rumored at this point, I can't keep track of all that, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a variant down the line, like with the bluish type skin, or a different paint scheme, more reddish brown like the original, different mask options, or future figures come with different masks. Zartan gets the wheels a turning. <laughs> yeah, that's how good this is. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And I think I've already seen 3D prints out there for the Swamp Skier. That's gotta be on the short list of vehicles that Hasbro may have planned for Classified, right? The smaller type things, the Swamp Skier, the Trouble Bubble, maybe a hang glider or two that actually fly. You throw it and it glides through the air. Every time I get a new G.I. Joe figure, it's, oh, I need more.